Good afternoon. Um, this is Amanda Brosanna Rios, the Communications Director for National Grange. Today, I am joined by my colleague, Membership and Leadership Development Director, Joe Stefanoni. Hi, Joe. Good afternoon. And we are back for another uh, episode of our Cultivating Connections in the Time of COVID Crisis web series things. Um, it has been almost two weeks where we've done these daily. Is that right, Joe? Yeah, but almost daily. Yeah. Every day we've done one, which is amazing. We're really excited to be able to bring this content to you. Um, and we have been talking a lot on these programs um, with all the different presenters from Pete Pomper, the community service director, to, to Betsy Huber, our national president, um, that there is an itch out there to reconnect right now because obviously we're all disconnected. Um, but this is probably going to be a mainstay for a little while. Um, and there's also, you know, the, the feeling that we need to do something more for each other and for our communities. And boy, doesn't that sound like a mix for the Grange? It, you know, it, not, not to, to be the broken record, but these are uh, unprecedented times for pretty much all of us. Um, but that, that doesn't mean we can't tackle the challenges that we face. Uh, and there, there's a number of ways that we can prepare to open doors to new members, to interested community members in an informal way, while we're not able to meet together in our Grange buildings or wherever our Granges meet. So, it, you know, it, as, as I've been fielding questions from our membership, from other state range membership directors about how do we move forward, um, especially getting questions from state membership directors about, you know, I was getting ready to organize a new Grange and, you know, now we can't meet together. Uh, how should we move forward? One of the, the biggest things I would recommend is have some sort of package of information or, or package of um, publicity for your Grange ready to go that you can send to someone that you can put on uh, social media, uh, that you can put on your Grange website that gives interested people, that gives potential members that information about what your Grange, and, and I'll put this in quotes, is doing uh, to serve your community, even though you know we can't be together in person right now. Um, but it's, it's also good to think about how can your Grange serve uh, once, once this is over, once we've at least gotten over the hump, and how will the community be different? What's, what will its needs be? And engaging community members is, is a great way to find that out, to see what the community will want. Um, Joe, I mean, one yes. of the things that I guess I wonder about is, you know, has our messaging um, about who we are and what we are, um, included enough about that that the family that um, ability for us to come together and and just be neighbors be friendly um or do we just know that inherently in Grange because I guess I don't know if I see that on a lot of the messaging I see more about the community service and stuff you know that that's a great question and and when we really uh analytically evaluate it perhaps we don't include uh, upfront enough of the Grange can be a place where you just get that person-to-person -person interaction, uh, whether it be on a monthly basis, a bi-monthly basis, or, or at these big community events that our Granges regularly do. Um, but, but breaking it down to its simplest levels, the Grange is the place where, you know, to, to use our, our Grange Month motto that we cultivate connections, but that we get that uh, intrinsic uh, tangible feeling of, of warmth, of goodwill, of just being with our, our neighbors, our friends, and our family. I mean, you had um, provided an article a year or two ago now about um, millennials feeling like 40% of millennials feeling disconnected, feeling lonely at pretty much in their lives at all times. Is that uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I would have to pull the article to get the uh, to get the specific statistics, but that that was the general neighborhood. 
um, my generation, our generation, millennials, post millennials, and especially Gen Z, which is the uh, the generation that's the teenagers right now, are feeling um, it, an inherent sense of loneliness just generally in society because they're more connected with technology than they are with people. Um, I mean, that was well before this social isolation, social isolation, and everything had started. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know it. It, it baffles me that uh, kids have cell phones in elementary school now. I, I didn't get my first cell phone until high school, um, but it, that that's more of a reflection of how integrated technology is in our society. Uh, but but expanding that to a to a broader scale, one of the, the things we're hearing about now, because of social isolation, is an ex, uh, exacerbated feeling of loneliness in senior citizen communities. Um, and With you know, again, rural seniors, that was already a huge issue. They exactly. Say, they say like 30% of rural seniors already felt lonely. You yes. Know, yeah. 30% of the seniors and 40% of the millennials already feeling lonely. Boy, that... You know, that, that's a big portion of the population when, when you put the actual numbers to it. And, um, this, this is where the Grange really swings for the fences, uh, I guess is the best way to put it is bringing people together and, and giving them, again, that, that good, warm feeling of connection and community. Um, so, you know, even if, even if it's not members, be sure to check on your community. Check on your members, but check on your community too. Make sure they're doing okay. I've been seeing numerous uh, Facebook posts and Granges updating their website saying, you know, we, if you need groceries, if you need essentials, let us know and we have three or four people who are willing to go out and get those, or, you know, we can order it online and have it delivered to your house or your residence. You know, it really puts into perspective the idea that a telephone call, you know, or a walk around the neighborhood where you wave and say some, some pleasantries to your neighbors is a community service. Absolutely. You know, my wife and I, we take our dog on a, a walk every night around our neighborhood, and we have been seeing more people than, than we ever have from living in this neighborhood for a little, about a year, um, out and walking, you know, and just that, that wave, hello, how are you, stay healthy. Um, we have got seen more of that in the last week and a half um, than we have in, in 12 months. So if we're not meeting as Granges, um, how do we harness this when when this is over, because I feel like it's such a tiny window. It's going to be such a fleeting moment um, for us to make a difference in people's lives. This isn't about making a difference in the Grange or, you know, moving the needle in our membership or anything like that. This is truly about, you know, making people's lives better and richer um, because they are part of our Grange family because we already inherently care about them. We're waving to them. We're talking to them. How do we harness that? How do we know? So the, the first thing I'll say is, is um, kind of circling to a little before that, I, I encourage every Grange to find some way to do something during this time of social isolation. You know, it can be all you know, range from a formal meeting on a platform like Zoom or go to meeting, Skype, you know, all, all the, the voice over internet programs that are out there, um, all the way down to just having a, a Grange conference call where you talk about a piece of Grange history or what your Grange is going to be doing after this. Um, but some way that your members stay connected more than just, you know, we are still the Grange. Uh, but in terms of, of capturing that window, um, I, all of our Granges, once we come off of social, social isolation, once we flatten the curve and get over the hump, uh, should be reaching out to the, the line of communication in their community. Now, that could be a newspaper, that could be a radio, or that could be social media, and talking about what your Grange is doing and what your Grange is planning to do to help rebuild the community and give everybody that sense of a normalcy again. Um, that that many people are feeling might never return, uh, because this this is where the Grange thrives and survives. Um, but as Amanda said, it's a short window. It's a small, fleeting window that we need to capture very soon. You know, I, th I think about when I was a teenager. I used to go and I used to sit because um, I lived outside of town. You know, in a rural area, and I would go into town and I would sit on the porch of one of the older residents 
and I would chat with her for hours sometimes. But you know, we'd we'd watch cars and we'd wave as they'd go by as you knew people and things like that. And that that's not something we do really anymore. But that in itself could be really powerful. Just go, I mean, if you're a hugger and you know that person well enough, you know, go knock on the door when this thing is over. And but of course we don't know when it's over, right? I mean, that's the other thing. Yeah. The physical contact versus the hey, let's just sit six feet apart on your porch together and have a conversation. There, there's going to be different levels of when this is over, but I certainly still think that there's going to be that window. And we've been talking a lot um, at our meeting a couple days ago with Pete Pomper. We talked about that, you know, throw open your doors. Like I, I want to coin that somehow, you know, even if you don't have a hall, find a way to just say, come and have coffee, you know, like together as a community. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, just, just as during the social distancing period, you know, we, we could have a big formal meeting or just a, a Grange conference call where we just talk about something that makes us feel good. Same way after social distancing ends, um, the Grange can be more than just that monthly meeting or that monthly potluck. The Grange can be a place where the community comes in, the community is invited in to talk about that, talk about um, what's good in the community, what needs to be changed, uh, and learn who their neighbors are. You know, maybe it, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, this social distancing ends while we still have some time to, to plant some vegetables in our yards. Uh, you know, do a seed swap, bring, bring your seeds, bring your plants to the Grange Hall or, or where the Grange meets and, uh, and meet and the community not, that if way. It, if it's further into the summer, right, just bring them your zucchini. Absolutely. Yeah, we, you plant more than one, you're going to have. An we we all have zucchini. abundances of, of zucchini and tomatoes. Um, one other thing I'd say, and, and I saw a comment from uh, Gloria Montero out in Nevada, uh, they're still signing people up to join their grange. And um, for those that are, you know, granges that have people interested in joining, absolutely have them fill out a membership application. And once we can have grange meetings again, um, or, or for those of you whose granges are tech proficient enough, you know, on a, on a virtual digital meeting, uh, give them the obligation or the welcoming ceremony and, and bring them into membership. Um, you know, I, I want to go back to Gloria's Grange. So Gloria Montero is the, one of the deputies for Nevada. Nevada has five current granges? Six. Six, uh, six I think. Six. <laughs> I should know that. Well, it depends on the day because we don't know if the charter's out, right? I mean... Because we're we're that close with that last one, so yeah. um, so in any case, <laughs> the charter may not have been presented before all this started. So, but they they've got just about enough to have a state range. Um, they're growing leaps and bounds. Like some of their ranges are four hundred members. Yeah, some of, some of the biggest ranges in the country. Right, and and they're only two, three, four years old, mm -hmm. and they're doing it because they're doing a lot of clubs. Um, and I think about, you know, like in college, we had a club for everything. In fact, I started two of them, I guess, you know, for different interest areas. Um, in high school, we had clubs, you know, um, and churches that are really valuable in people's lives tend to have clubs. You know, they're, they're a part of a larger, like you're part of national, but they are, you know, more connected to said larger because they're a part of a smaller too. And if you're in a Grange, even if it's a small Grange, you know, there's probably three of you who really like sewing and the rest of them don't really care, but you could be your own little sewing clutch or your own little book club or your own little, and I know I saw TJ Malaski on here um, earlier, you know, they have a book club at their Grange in, in Minnesota. Those type of things I think are going to be so, um, valuable in people's lives after this because it's a it's a built-in um, social network uh, that is real and personal and not theoretical and virtual um, but now's the time isn't it I mean we can't we can't wait until May or June or July and start when we can we almost need to call the members now have those conversations about what do you like doing do you like making cards Joe do you like board games like we're gonna have a board game club and we're gonna invite all your friends and not even worry about range. Absolutely. You know, now's the time to lay the foundation for those plans that get implemented the minute that um, 
state and federal governments say, okay, we're, we're clear. Uh, what, one of the things that for those of you that saw our legislative director, Burton Eller earlier today, talking about what's going on in the dairy industry, um, preserving food, not, you know, growing food is step one, pres preserving food is step two. And I think that's uh, a big topic that uh, a lot of our communities are going to be addressing. A lot of our community members are gonna be concerned about when we come off of, of the social isolation is um, after seeing the run on different food products, uh, you know, stores not having enough milk or meat or, or vegetables on the shelves, how do we preserve food? How do we create our own food supply? Um, you know, e even if you're not growing it, getting those things from the store and then um, canning, preserving, and keeping them on your shelf so that you have a stable and reliable food supply in case something like this happens again. And, and uh, you know, from listening to the professionals, something like this will happen again, maybe not to this magnitude, but uh, um, uh, what's the Ben Franklin quote? An ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure. You know, and not just a, even your preserving and your canning, um, which is a very specific set of skills and knowledge. Um, and there is, you know, a science to that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have anybody in your range who has done canning and jarring uh, in the recent years with the recent equipment, who can truly say, I know that I'm going to be able to teach this this well and make sure everything- Not kill anybody. Well. Now, by <laughs> what <you> said, um, <laughs> we do not need a mass round of botulism. No. Um, I do not want that PR nightmare, but, um, you know, preparedness. I, I don't know how many of my friends I talked to who not just didn't have toilet paper, which I understand some are on fixed incomes, but some who have a little bit more disposable income had the ability to have, you know, a couple packs of those things because why not? They don't go bad, uh, in their home. And they, the preparedness of, of knowing that you can freeze milk, you can buy boxed or canned milk. Um, what do you do with certain, you know, types of canned goods in order to not not just give them shelf life, but but give them value to mm -hmm. your to your diet? Um, general preparedness, I think, is is a great thing that we should be getting folks, you know, up up to snuff. Absolutely. You know, out in California for at least 10 years, if not 15, uh, many of our granges have become the local response center for uh, an organization called CERT, which is Community Emergency Response Teams. You know, in California, we, we live, especially Northern California, we live under the threat of the quote unquote big one, um, that, that earthquake that we've been waiting to, to roll around for about 100 years now. Um, and, and when that hits, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when that hits, um, there will be- So you're calling for it now. <laughs> you know, we've been tempting fate for years since, uh, since Loma Prieta in 89. Um, but when that hits, there will be many things that communities need like hand well pumps. Uh, and, and many of our granges that have uh, some acreage or have a piece of property have put the uh, metal shipping containers that contain those things like a um, hand crank radio and a hand well pump, some of those more basic uh, utilitarian tools that would get the community through an emergency like a big earthquake. Now, this is a little different than a big earthquake. Uh, I see Tacey Curry from Dixon, California. Um, said folks could do skill shares to impart food sharing, uh, including bread making or, or sharing sourdough starters, uh, kind of going back to that food preparedness and food readiness topic. Yeah, I mean, if you're home today with somebody who's tech savvy um, or, you know, can just hold a, a cell phone camera straight and, and, you know, point and shoot a video, today is the time to share the knowledge, you know, not because we don't know about an uncertain tomorrow, but just in general, I mean, there's so many people who would find that valuable. And then of course, if you're, if you're connecting it with something, especially you learned from another Grange member, you learned in Grange, if you're somehow connecting it to your Grange experience, make sure not, not only to share that really publicly and, and put those, you know, tags out on it, the hashtags, the, 
you know, the words on it that say Grange, but share it with us. Joe and I are always looking for ways that we can showcase the amazing things that our members know, do, share um, with people in order to, for him, you know, convince someone that this is a worthwhile organization to support as an e-member or join as a local member. And for me, um, to, to get the press to cover uh, and to get, you know, other organizations or foundations or companies interested in sponsoring. Um. You know, thinking about what we can do in, in the present um, for, for Granges that aren't on social media, that don't have a digital footprint, that that could be a, uh, a, a isolation task, I, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, I, I know you've all heard that the National Grange provides every Grange in the country with a free website. Um, it, it's a basic website, but it fulfills the functions that any Grange would need. Uh, and it's it's pretty user friendly. Uh, so find someone in your Grange who's willing to take that project on. You know, we have a, a great uh, resource user guide that our IT director Stephanie Wilkins has developed for that. And um, it it would be the perfect thing for someone in your Grange to do to get that set up so the community can find information about what the Grange does in their community. Uh, you can also share, you know, important information from government and health officials. Uh, and the same thing with, with Facebook, same thing with social media, um, to, to show the community you're there, you're active and you're wanting to do just as soon as we all come back together. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that we talk about, you and I talk about, um, our staff talks about a lot is that we're kind of, we're talking to the choir. I mean, every one of these people here obviously have Facebook. They have a Facebook page for their Grange. They probably have a website for their Grange. They're, they're already doing those things. Um, and not to say that any one of them has any extra spare moments in the day. I talked to enough people to know that almost everyone is feeling like this, this period, uh, they're working more than they ever have. But if you do have a student who's home, Virginia is done with classes for the year. They, they're done with learning. You know, that doesn't mean they're going to hibernate for, you know, the rest of the next six or eight weeks. Um, there's got to be a way that we connect the resources of the teenagers who would like to be on technology, um, who might feel compelled to help right about now, and the Granges that don't have. So if you can be the bridge, because Lillian or Linda or Tacey or one of our, our viewers here may know a Grange that struggles with that and be able to do the introduction and get them online. Um, but that kind of comes back to that other part that I think was a really big part of this conversation is your Grange may be welcoming and ready to take in new members or start things or do things now. Um, but there are certainly Granges that aren't having these conversations, aren't involved in being here on these conversations and things. And so how, now I'm, I'm putting your um, leadership development director cap on instead of membership. How do you as member X, you know, from, from that range, get to call or offer assistance to another Grange um, and encourage them to indeed be ready? And, and be welcoming. You know, you, uh, we're, we must be on the same uh, brain length, right, brain wavelength right now, because that, that was going to be the next thing I bring up. Uh, I guess the best, the best label or title to put on most of our viewers right now is a Grange influencer. Uh, you know, you, we, we have some very familiar faces, uh, or very familiar uh, Facebook profiles uh, in, in the comments section and, and who are our viewers for all these videos. Um, use that influence and uh, reach out to your brothers and sisters in a neighboring Grange, uh, you know, a Grange that you might have a relationship with or just one that you may not and, and you want to build that bridge, that relationship, um, and reach out, see how you can help them if it's, if it's in your, uh, your schedule, uh, but offer suggestions, you know, find, find that mutual um, link of, look, we, we have an opportunity to do some good, 
to uh, to build something really great once this ends. Um, and, and we're here to help. We can get you connected with the right resources. Um, we can answer any questions you have um, and, and show them that there's support. They're not on an island there by themselves. So, I mean, I'm wondering, have any of, and you use the exact perfect word, have any of our influencers here cross the line, you know, <laughs> knocked on the neighboring Grange's door? I mean, I think, and I don't say this, I mean, this is a public forum, um, but I think that every single organization of any kind could have this same discussion. There are some granges, just like there are some churches and some mason lodges and some whatever that have an insular culture. You know, they enjoy the fraternal uh, fellowship that they have with one another, but they don't particularly want that disturbed or disrupted by having new members with new ideas and, um, you know, new drive to do things differently. Um, and so how do our influencers at this time get taken seriously without, you know, being kicked out of the, <laughs> being kicked out of the halls or having, having, you know, real issues? You know, that th this comes down to, to interpersonal relationships and, and there's no uh, there's no cookie cutter way to define how you should proceed. Um, but it, it all starts with making that connection. And from there, you gauge where you need to go. You know, is, is it a hostile response, which which we would hope we wouldn't get? Uh, or is it a, a fairly open and, and positive uh, response to change response to progress? Are you saying that you cultivate connections? With you do. Partners? You do cultivate connections. Kind of, kind of veering off um, onto a, a separate uh, note about membership. This is also a perfect time to look at how we quote unquote market the Grange to our community um, at community events at, at different marketing events where our goal is to generate interest in someone joining the community Grange. And um, one, of, one of my marketing mentors, who happens to be my mom, um, uh, she has a degree in marketing, and she, she pulled this one out on me the other day. Uh, marketing boils down to the FAB method, F-A-B, and that is features, advantages, and benefits. Uh, so evaluate your community grange and identify what the features are. And features are the things you do. They could be your grange meetings. Uh, your Grange events, or just the general fellowship that you have as a, a community Grange. Um, and, you know, why, why someone would want to, uh, to be a part of that, why those features are enticing. Second, the advantages. Uh, what differentiates you from the alternatives in the community? Uh, now, there's, there's the general things of what differentiates the Grange as an organization from uh, the alternatives of the Masons or the Odd Fellows, the Lions, the Rotary, you know, go down the list of all the organizations that do great work in our communities. But specifically for your community, Grange, what differentiates you? What makes you unique in your own community? This could be the events you do or the information, the educational programs you put on. And finally, the benefits. What does someone get from being a member and why do they want to join? Now we have our tangible benefits available through the National Grange that cover everything, um, hearing aids, computer discounts, uh, healthcare pharmaceutical benefits, uh, office depot printing and uh, just other sh uh, shopping discounts. Um, your state ranges may have, may have their own tangible benefits, uh, but that, those benefits can also be intangible. They can be the number of hours of service you provide to your community every year, um, the things you do to make the community better, the education that you provide to members and non-members, um, or, or the intangible benefits of cultivating those connections in your community. So I, I would very much encourage all of our Grange influencers, not only for their own Grange, but to assist other Granges with with assessing their fab their features advantages and benefits you know what i'm really glad that you mentioned that and i also like that you noted that it's from marketing because those are exactly the things that i advise when granges ask how 
and what to put in brochures. You know, people want to know what their dollar goes to, what their hour goes to. Um, they, they want to see that if they give you an hour at a meeting, that that hour will result in, you know, the carnival that everybody loves continuing or, you know, kids' backpacks being stuffed, whether it's the specific service or whether it's the planning and getting to an event or project that people enjoy. I mean, it's really important to be able to say what you do <laughs> and say it with numbers, especially, um, or, you know, some, some quick visual way is really great. Um, but I, I don't think I've ever, and I will, change this from here on out i don't think i've ever said to them we provide you know 30 contact hours a year you know face to face with individuals to make sure that they feel like they have fellowship and family in their lives i mean that's powerful today um in a way that i six months ago i would have been like well that's nice but like your fraternal organization they'll think you're doing that anyway you know, Absolutely. You know, you know th this is where we start to get into uh, Pete Pomper's domain, but I think we we may redefine what we consider community service after after all of these events. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, so I'm going to tell you, we've got a lot of great comments. Gloria is going to make me cry. Um, <laughs> and and I will remind you that, you know, we haven't had any questions. If there's something that you want to ask, um, not just us. But we're facilitating the conversation kind of among the board too. So if there's a question that you want to ask other influencers here, other people who are joining us who are interested in this topic, um, put it out in the board. We'll probably repeat it so that we call attention to it um, and maybe give our two cents worth. I'm sure you can all tell that conversations um, with Joe and I on the phone or some of some of our staff on the phones um, or you know at restaurants or wherever we happen to gather together are a lot of fun. We tend to banter a lot, but we also tend to talk Grange and where we're going to be, you know, 40, 50, 60 years from now, um, when we are old and gray and given up the torch. Um, but we never talk about it not being here in that time. I think that's really important. I mean, it's hard to think of, um, you know, what that future looks like, but it, it's important to say that your staff, your, your leaders, your elected leaders at the national level, and I'm sure at your state levels and local levels, I and mean, we're not talking about um, what it looks like when Grange isn't here. We're talking about what it is that Grange will look like and how important it will be then. So speaking of Absolutely. futures, I gotta say this, I have something that I just, I'll, I'll, I'm not a baby person, you know that Joe, but um, <laughs> It's so dang cute. Um, Tracy and Phil Jones, who are the young patrons, national young patrons this year, had a baby in February. She was a super preemie. So she's just now getting into normal size things. Look at this onesie that came in. It's so tiny. It's like, it's like the size of my head, like for scale, but isn't that adorable? So I need to put this in the mail to them. Um, that's the Grange foundation fundraiser shirt um, that's come out and we have them in onesie sizes as you can see so uh i will i'll be putting the link down down below but i don't think i've ever had a, a time again where I, I felt like that we're in this together message would resonate so much how about you i mean what reflections have you had over the past couple couple of days so, you know, I, uh, since I, I have had a much working from home, I, I set my own hours pretty much to start with, but, uh, now that I can't go outside as much, uh, I I've had some more spare time to dive into my Grange history. And, and for those of you that know me, I'm a avid Grange historian. Um, and, and even Burton mentioned this earlier today, Grangers are rediscovering the idea of victory gardens. Um, 
a, a lot of what I'm seeing now mirrors what the Grange went through during the sec first and second world wars. And, and you have to remember the first world war was going on concurrently with the last national health pandemic of, of the Spanish flu outbreak. Um, it, while, while we really have to, as members, look inward to the comfort, protection, and welfare, not only of our own Granges, but of our families, of, of our, our nuclear families, um, there, there is that overarching uh, concern of, of how is the community uh, going to make it through. Um, you know, go, going, like I said, going back through my Grange history, uh, we, are, we are really reassessing and, and refocusing our efforts on what does the community need. You know, Granges have been very good at service, at community service in a general sense, but I think we're really getting back to that specific question of what does the community need? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I just want to back up. We, we talked a lot about what our influencers here can do. Um, and Lillian Booth from your home state in California, who is, I think, one of your mentors as well. Absolutely. He was first lady when you were knee high to or a grasshopper. Um, <laughs> she said there's been a question about what the purpose of the Pomona Grange is. And for those who aren't familiar, who might be joining us for the first time in one of these, because you're checking out what the Grange might be in your life. Um, the Pomona Grange is that kind of secondary level. So your sport and Grange, that's the one that you go to and you enjoy that fellowship. Um, the Pomona Grange is at secondary level and, you know, it's, it's had multiple purposes over years, but I'll let Joe, you know, kind of take the lead on that in a minute. But um, the question was, could this discussion lead to a resurgence of the importance of the Pomona Granges helping Granges? Because right now there is a, a feeling of what is their role so, um, you know, the, the Pomona Grange, like Amanda said, has, has had multiple purposes. And, and I guess the best way to put it is its purpose has been fluid over 152 years. Uh, when you go back and look at the early, um, the, the early history of Pomona Granges across the country, they were the agricultural marketing arm of the Grange. You know, this, this was in a day where uh, you had to be a farmer to be a Grange member, and uh, the minutes of Pomona Granges all across the country are filled with notes of, you know, brother so-and-so brought his crop of 30 bushels of wheat and sold X number of bushels or, or put it into the Pomona Grange pool that was taken to the nearest market location. And then it shifted to um, an, an advocacy arm that wasn't the state range to advocate for more local and regional issues, not just the state, uh, the state and national issues that the state and national granges were advocating for. You know, in, in my mind's eye, I do see this reigniting a, a conversation on the importance of Pomona granges, um, especially in large states, you know, my, my home state is, is geographically and, and population wise large, um, to, to have that more regular sense of regional contact, regional discourse, uh, between our Grange members to organize community service, to organize, uh, response and, and service, to, uh, to that area that's not just the annual state convention or the annual national convention. Um, I, I also see the Pomona Grange being the teaching and mentoring arm of the organization. Um, I, I have a number of friends who are, are uh, very actively involved in the Masonic organization um, and the Masons do what they call lodges of instruction, which they basically teach the history and the ritual, the procedure, and it, it's almost like a leadership training academy for their organization. Um, my, you know, my vision of the future of the Grange sees that the Pomona Granges are active in terms of mentoring and education internally, but also um, connection and service uh, externally. I think um, I love that you said that my vision of the future of the Grange. And I love that because these are the discussions that we have. That is like the tagline that leads into them a lot of times. Mandy uh, Boswick, who is our national youth director, 
Sam Wilkins, who's our national junior director. Um, Joe and I all are around the same age. And so we, we uh, end up texting or having these discussions a lot, not to say that we're not discussing these type of things with the rest of our staff and officers and delegates and things like that. But um, just it's, it's fun to hear that term here. Um, and it's fun to think of, I wonder what some of the other folks out there, you know, these Grange influencers that we're watching get on every day and, and take part in this. I wonder what their vision of that Grange future is um, and, and how much that is influenced by what people who are maybe younger than them are saying they want to see the Grange do and become. You know, uh, it's it's one of those things that I, I'm sure everybody who's who's watching right now has had that thought, even fleetingly, of you know, in the future of the Grange, we would see this or or this would happen. Um, write it down, share it with people. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not just not just current members, but but future members. You know. And, and especially get get their input of where do you see the Grange going? Um, Linda Rothwell from Kansas commented that their Pomona Grange was the place where they went through resolutions before state session. Uh, that was a very common function of Pomona Granges, uh, especially when uh, you look at states like New York and Pennsylvania and Ohio and Washington that even 30 years ago had 400 community granges on the rolls. The, the Pomona Grange was a uh, filter for the legislative uh, issues of the day. Um, and, and perhaps if, if we get some uh, vociferous resolution writers back into the organization, uh, that, that could definitely be one of their purposes, again, is, is to be that board of review or uh, um, uh, editing, so to say. I love that you use vociferous. Um, I'm normally the one throwing out <laughs> some word that somebody goes and has to quick Google. And cause I'm a wordy. People are foodies. I mean, I like food too, clearly, but um, I'm a wordy. And so that's, anyway. Uh, so you have a question that came in. I think, as most of you oh. know, uh, you can submit questions on here under um, the video or to the side of the video um, or comments. You can email them to me, although I don't monitor the email during the live session. It's just too much, too many pains to juggle. Um, and if you have my cell phone number, which a lot of folks do, uh, it's on practically everything because I also do work from home typically. Um, you can text me with questions if you're interested. And so this question came in, um, what is your opinion of reorganizing Pomona Granges as 501c3. Uh, Amanda, you just cut out on us. Oh no, am I back? No, ah, okay, keep going, keep going. You there? I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Yay, okay, sorry, I apologize. My response to that, by the way, after our debacle the other day is, <laughs> Whatever you do, if I leave, you just keep going. Okay. You might still be live on camera. Uh, so don't start picking your nose. Um, anyway, okay. So uh, what is your opinion of reorganizing Pomona Granges as 501c3 organizations to raise funds for charitable activities in our community granges and communities? And I want to, before you start, so you have a minute to think. Um, <laughs> I want to just remind everyone that so the National Grange is a 501c5, which does mean we are a nonprofit, but we are not um, the nonprofit that you get the tax write off for. We have a charitable arm, the 501c3, uh, that is the one that if you provide funds to, you could potentially get the tax write off. There are about 28 different 501c categorizations. Um, ours specifically is for agricultural, agricultural fraternal organizations. Um, and that's why we were 501c5. Um, your local granges are not 501c3s um, because you're part of a fraternal structure. Or shouldn't be. Or, or shouldn't be. If, if, you, if you have gotten that status, somebody at some point might review it and be like, mm. um, but your local granges are typically 501c8s or 501c10s, depending on when you organize and how much activity you had done in the realm of things like um, member services, member benefits, specifically like maybe owning a piece of a 
co-op or having run some type of business out of your grange or um, having some type of investment or insurance company affiliation, it's a very complicated explanation just to say that um, when we talk about five, when we talk about granges, typically we're talking about nonprofits, but not the nonprofit that you think of as in the tax deductible. Um, so 501c3 is that designation the IRS gives to organizations that are charitable um, and or have some educational or civic benefit purpose um, that's specific uh, to a, a number of criteria. And so 501c3 is what uh, you were asked if you believe that Pomona Grange should be reorganized into those in order to help raise money um, for community granges and communities. I, I will begin my answer with, I am not a uh, legal or tax expert. Um, I, I have had some direct experience with, uh, with getting the, the legal tax structure of an organization set up. We just last year in California voted to reorganize or organize a new California Grange Foundation as a 501c3. Um, and helped to get those articles of incorporation developed. Um, you know, I, I, I like the idea. Um, it is a more direct way to provide uh, tax, dedu tax deductible assistance uh, to directly to community granges in a county or in a region. Um, and my video just stopped, so we may not be recording anymore. But, um, you know, I, I definitely see the advantages and the purpose of all of our state granges having their own 501c3 wing, their own foundation, uh, as, as well as the one we have at the National Grange for, uh, for activities like scholarships, like large educational programs and trainings that, that are charitable in nature. Um, this, this is something that would have to be done in consultation with a, uh, with a tax expert um, also with a, a legal organization expert. Um, but I, I do see the advantages, um, but cannot give you a, a solid or direct answer as to if that is the best route to take. Um, I, I will say C3s also take a general higher level of management than uh, a C5 or a C8 would. Um, the C5 is what we are at the National Grange. Many of our state granges are C8s due to the uh, fraternal mutual benefits that they used to offer, i.e. insurance. Um, so um, the, uh, there's also a restriction on C3s about um, getting involved in political campaigning. Um, most of, you know, and I'm, I'm reading directly from the IRS website right now, most of what our granges do would fly under the radar because we do not get involved in direct political campaigns for, uh, for individuals. Uh, that, is, that is prohibited as part, of our, as part of our structure as an organization. Um, so we, we don't get involved with candidates, but that is another aspect of the regulations of 501c3s is restriction on political campaign intervention. And so uh, a lot of words for no answer. <laughs> I was going to say, you really would make a very fantastic politician. You know, had I, I had a, uh, a livestock judge one time. I was eight years old and he actually was a Grange member. He knew Bernie and Helen Shoemaker from Ohio. Um, and asked me a question, and, and as my parents tell the story, all they see is, is Tom, who, who is this very large, robust man, just throw his head back and laugh. And, and for those of you that have watched the livestock show, when he was giving his reasons, he got down to me in the lineup and goes, that boy's either going to be a politician or a preacher. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, for those of you uh, who have not seen it, and I'm really hoping that your mom uh, jumps on this and does this for me. Um, there, there is no photo of Joe where he does not look like a miniature man. Um, I've seen a couple of him as, you know, a three-year-old child or a six-year-old child or a 12-year-old child. And if you did not know that what age he is today and that he has grown physically, um, you would believe that, that, that he has just always been a man. 
So because, <laughs> okay. Um, so that was the one big question that we've had. We haven't really had a lot, but I will say that the one comment that I saw that it makes you happy to see that your elected leadership at the national level, I hope you all as members are, are happy to see something like this. Um, Steve Coy said, one of my mentors, late Bert S. Morse, used to frequently say, I believe the Grange has yet to see its finest hour. I believe that as well. If that's not kind of inspirational from one of your executive committee members at the national level. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, I, I never had the opportunity to meet uh, Brother Morse, but uh, he, he did quite a lot for our organization. Um, I, I believe he was also on the National Grange Executive Committee uh, in his day as well. Um, the, the Grange has yet to see its finest hour because uh, of, of the new blood that we continually bring into the organization, uh, that, that infusion of new ideas, that infusion of, of that On my screen, you're currently frozen, so I'm going to apologize now, Joe, if you're talking and I'm talking over you. Okay, it looks as if you're frozen on Facebook too. So hopefully we're, we're having this dueling co-host thing where you're getting one of us, but not both of us half the time anymore. Um, I think we've been here for an hour. And so um, clearly our tech is telling us it's time to be done. Um, and I want to tell you that I really do appreciate um, every one of you who has tuned in um, and let us know that you're appreciating these. Um, I hope, <laughs> I hope that, uh, well, Joe, just let me know that he, he is also kicked off. Um, I hope that you will join us um, tomorrow night when we do a very, very special uh, first ever Grange virtual talent show. Um, Chris Hamp, the national lecturer, will be co-hosting. We are uh, hopefully bringing you six great acts that are your brothers and sisters. It starts at 8.30 Eastern. Um, call it date night in. Uh, gather your, your friends and your family um, who are with you in this time where we're social, socially isolating ourselves. Um, let them know they can't isolate themselves, their bedrooms and far reaches of the house, but come together and, and watch a hopefully good show. Um, and in the meantime, please be well. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, and Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern, we'll be doing a discussion on uh, Grange Revival, what it was in 2019, what it's going to be in 2021. And so we welcome you to join us then as well. And we'll continue to do these every day until we are all um, back to better health and um, back out and doing good works in our community without having to worry about this distancing. So stay safe, stay well, wash your hands. Thank you all for joining us again. We'll see you tomorrow.